Hello guys and gals, and I finally got around to doing what I set out to do. Um, sorry, there we go. Um, so this video takes less space, we're going to just look at this still image. It's just better than the camera going all over the place. Anyways, so I finally read the book 100% Wolf, and I wanted to compare it to the movie. Now, um, when I set out to actually do this, I didn't realize it would be such a big undertaking, to be honest. Um, I don't have my copy of the book anymore because um, I borrowed it from the library and I returned it. I could have kept it a little bit longer, but um, I I could have kept it another two or three weeks probably, but I decided to um, return it after I read it. Now, um, I will say that the book is way, way different than the movie. I wasn't, I had no idea exactly how different. Um, and we're going to go over some of those things. Um, Anyways, I still have another question I want to ask the, um, the author. But anyways, because um, I am in contact with the author every so often. Anyways, I know I'm saying anyways a lot, but let's start this out. The movie doesn't exactly flow at all like the book does, and I can kind of see why. In the book, um, well, the movie starts with a flashback or six years before the actual events six years before, that is, about um, basically how Fleischhart ended up supposedly dead. Again, there's going to be tons of spoilers here. It's going to say spoilers in the thing, so if you read that and you still watch this video, then it's your fault. Anyways, um, we're going to talk about the two different ways that this started out. Now, the things that I always thought were really weird about the movie weren't actually in the book, so... There is that. Um, in the movie, the books, the I mean, in the movie, oh, sorry, it starts out with the werewolves actually saving people and stuff like that. In the book, that doesn't happen. Um, and for some reason, I don't really know why they do that. I don't know why they chose to go that angle. Um, basically, in the book, there is something called the Blood Red Hunt, where they go and they hunt things, like deer and stuff like that, not humans or anything. But, um... But yeah, anyways, in the in the book, Flashheart was tricked into um, getting caught by Foxwell Crip. Now, in the movie, Foxwell Crip is this ice cream guy, ice cream salesman. In the book, he is a werewolf hunter, you know, a professional. And I don't know why they changed his character around so much. Maybe because selling ice cream was funny or something like that. Um, I'm going to sw switch back and forth between the book and the movie. A lot, so it's going to be kind of hard to keep track of. But um, let's talk about the characters first. I think that'll be easier than actually talking about the flow of the movie. Um, let's talk about Freddy Lupin. In the book, Freddy Lupin is kind of a little bit of a brat towards his um, towards his uncle. Um, in the book, that is. Um, also, his cousins antagonize him quite a bit. Um, but his cousins don't really make um, any much of an appearance. You don't even know their names in the movie. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know if Freddy actually intentionally antagonizes his, his uncle, Hotspurt, or not. But, um, but in the book, it was basically apparent that um, him and his uncle didn't get along at all. So, um, yeah, Freddy's character was different in this in that he was more demure and kinder, and they didn't really touch on that. Let's talk about um, Hotspur. Um, there's a little bit of a difference, I guess. He's probably closest to the character in the book. Then again, he's the bad guy, sort of. Um... And we'll get more into that later. Um, but I think that what they changed the most was Foxwell Crip. In the book, Foxwell Crip is this renowned werewolf hunter. He's like vicious and he kills werewolves, actually. So anyways, I'm going to go into why I think they changed the opening scene. But um, first of all, let's talk more about Foxwell Crip. As I said, in the book, he is a werewolf hunter. In the movie, he's this goofy ice cream salesman guy. 
he sells ice cream from a truck and everyone thinks he's weird, you know, and he has a pet monkey and the pet, the, the, um, pet monkey or the monkey plushie puppet. I think it's actually, I think it's a puppet, um, isn't in the book at all. And so I don't know why they added scoops to the, to the movie either. Um, so, but yeah, also, um, Moonstones function differently in the book and the movie, and I'm going to go into that too, but let's first of all talk about, um, the, the intro scene that I'm talking about. Um, I actually found the intro scene kind of, well, kind of needless, to be honest. The part where they're superheroes and they're saving everybody. Because, I mean, that's like the job for the police. And I think I mentioned that um, in the fire department. I think I mentioned that in my review. Um, because it just doesn't quite fit the mood of the movie. It isn't bad or anything like that. Um, we need to go into what the, what the whole deal is with Moonstones. And we're not talking about the Pokemon Moonstones because... Yeah. Anyways, in the movie... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the movie first. Moonstones detect werewolves. I mean, if there's a werewolf nearby, then the moonstone ring will light up. Or the moonstone, actually. Um, in the book, a moonstone will prevent a werewolf from transforming back into a human if they're in werewolf form and into a werewolf if they're in human form. So, um, now that function was filled by silver in this, in this movie. Now, again, um, it is kind of delving into werewolf lore. Um, because, um, they, they did differently with the, uh, Moonstone. And, um, so, yeah. Apparently, there's, like, only one Moonstone in the movie, and Freddy Lupin had it. His father gave it to him, I think. And he used it to track down the werewolves as they were saving people in the intro. Um, which kind of got him into trouble. Anyways. Let's talk about how the events went down in the movie, and then I'll go talk about how the things went down in the book and the difference there. Um, there are some things I re really liked about the movie because you really get more backstory for some of the characters that wasn't in the book, and I do like that. But again, that, we're going to get into that. Okay, first of all, um, after they, in the movie, this is all going to be movie, okay? In the movie, um, Flash Heart, that's Freddy's dad, Freddy and, you know, all the rest of the werewolves, um, they go around and they save people. And apparently it's a nightly thing. And so in this particular can um, canon, I guess it's canon, uh, the werewolves, I thought, could only transform in a full moon. But if, if they're doing this every night, then apparently they can transform at will. I'm not exactly sure because the movie didn't make, exactly make it clear. Now, Another thing the movie didn't make clear that the book did is the difference between... Well, there's two types of werewolves. There's a type that can transform. That's um, um, Hotspur, um, Fleischhart, you know, all the werewolves that are wa werewolves. They can actually transform into werewolves. Those are Fangen. F-A-N-G-E-N. Fangen. And um, then there's also um, werewolves that are wearing, and they can't transform at all. That would be Harriet and Chariot. You aren't given their names in the movie, but in the book, there's a, a, a lot about them because they antagonize Freddy so much. Anyways, um, again, we're going to go back to the movie now, okay? I'm sorry if I'm jumping around a lot. but In the movie, after um, they save everybody, you know, or whatever, and they want to head home, they take a little detour. Um, Freddy's riding on Flashheart's back, and it's... He's like four. I guess that he would be four when this happened. Because it's supposedly his 10, 10th birthday when he is able to transform into a werewolf. That's according to the book. Now, I'm not sure about the, the movie because, well, I don't know. Again, it's kind of hazy to me. It was a part of the movie that I really didn't understand at first. But... Um, there's something similar to this in the book, I guess. But anyways, I'm going to go over the movie part first. Um, Flashheart and um, Freddy, they're running towards this um, 
you know, flash hearts running towards this thing, and Freddy's on his back. Um, he, uh, uh, flash heart stops quickly, and Freddy falls off and in, into the middle of the road, where Fox, um, Fox, well, Crypt is right driving his um ice cream truck, and so um. Foxwell thinks that Freddy's in trouble because he's grabbed by Flashheart. And um, it ends up leading to um, the supposed death of Flashheart. Because um, that's another thing that's different about the movie and the book. I'll get into that later. But anyways. So yeah. Um, Flashheart tries to save Foxwell Crip from falling off this cliff. And um, he ends up falling. Now, um, to, uh, supposedly to his death, but anyways, um, that's the thing. Um, another thing is communication. Again, I'm going to get to the book, don't worry. But the communication in the movie um, was that humans can't understand werewolves, but dogs can understand werewolves, but not, I think that dogs can understand humans too. You see, there's, um, but in the book, they couldn't understand each other at all. Um, I mean, humans can't understand werewolves or dogs. Werewolves can't understand dogs or humans, and humans can't understand dogs or werewolves. There was a, a big communication gap there, and the movie didn't really address that. Just that, um, I think that it, there's there was a communication triangle or something like that, and I might be wrong on that, but, um, the whole communication thing was really interesting. And the book made it, made it a point of that, especially when Freddy turned back into a human and he's like, oh, follow me, you won't be able to understand me. Anyways, that's all. Oh, wait, okay. In the book, um, and you have to wait till one of the later chapters before you actually find out how Flashheart ended up, you know, compromised. But anyways, um, Foxwell Crip, what was this world-renowned werewolf hunter. And um, he hunted werewolves because um, he saw one of his neighbors transform into a werewolf on a full moon, due to a full moon, and um, got scared, basically. Eventually, the, um, the neighbor died of old age or something. But um, eventually, Foxwell did all this research on werewolves until he was like an expert on, on the subject. So, um, so yeah. Anyways, um, he, Foxwell gets this note that's written in blood from Hotspur, basically, um, giving him insight on where he can actually kill a werewolf. Hotspur being the bad guy, he lured his, his brother, you know, into the stone circle. And the stone circle wasn't in the, um, in the, um, movie that I know of. But, um, yeah. Um, Flashheart ends up getting shot through the gut or the abdomen. It, it, but the bullet passed all the way through him, didn't nick any of his organs or anything, and um, so he stumbled away, kept chasing after Crip until he eventually passed out. He was too weak to transform back into human form, and um, Hotspur ended up finding him, putting this Moonstone um, collar on him so that he couldn't transform back, and then kept him in Coldfax Fortress. That, that was according to the book. In the movie, um, he was injured from the fall and um, couldn't resist when the um, dog catchers came and took him to to um, Coldfax, the Coldfax Fortress, or the dog shelter. And um, Except this time, he was fitted with a silver bracelet and um, wasn't able to transform back into human form. So that's different. Now, I can see why they rework this. Um, I mean, you just can't have characters in children's movies firing guns, especially, you know, because of, well, you know, everything that's happened, you know, with shootings and stuff like that. I can see why they, they didn't do the whole gun thing, the silver bullet gun thing, because, um, Hotspur actually had a silver gun in the, in the book, and so did, um, Foxwell Crip. But anyways, um, so that was different. Now, um, let's talk about Freddy's transformation. Um, the origin of why Freddy turned into a poodle 
according to the book anyways, was that um, an ant had this poodle called Dripsy Whipsy that bit, that bit um, Freddie's mom while she was pregnant. So apparently, um, I don't know, so the DNA got in there and so Freddie transformed into a poodle. That is my interpretation of the, of the book and maybe why he transforms into a poodle in the first place. Um, the movie credit, credits, credits that to the moon spirits, you know, choosing his form or something like that. But um, something else that's different, um, in the book, the second time Freddy transformed back into a werewolf, or, you know, from boy to werewolf, um, he transformed into a black werewolf, you know, like his dad. But it said in the book that there would be some moons where he would transform back into a poodle. Sometimes it would be a werewolf. It was never it was never certain what he would turn into. Okay, so we talked about some of those differences. Um, one thing they don't ever really touch on is what happened to Freddie's mom. Just that um, he says in the movie that he misses his mom, and his father agrees, and they don't really say what happened to her. Um, and the book doesn't really mention what happened to her either. But yeah. So, we've talked about um, how Freddy's different. And the movie itself is really, really different. It has the same setting. But um, all the events transpire differently because Foxwell Crip is like an ice cream salesman who has a werewolf museum. And um, so, it's really different. And I'm going to go over... Foxwell Crip, basically, in the movie first, because that's basically the easiest. In the movie, Foxwell Crip has good intentions, I think. He, he saw Freddy get taken by a werewolf and assumes that Freddy got eaten or killed. So he goes on a rampage to find werewolves, because, you know, for vengeance or something like that. Um... And he tries to inform people about werewolves, but they all think he's crazy. Even though the admission to his museum is like free or something after all that. One thing that I did find confusing, though, is that his ice cream truck had like all the scanning equipment and stuff like that. Really high tech stuff for, you know, just an ice cream salesman. So um, it would have been nice if they would ha have actually made him a werewolf hunter because that would have actually fit better than an ice cream salesman. He, he could have a cover of being an ice cream salesman and still be a werewolf hunter. But um, yeah, his intentions are overall good. He discovers, in the movie anyways, that the mayor is a werewolf. Hotspur. Hotspur is a werewolf. And... Um, Basically, instead of shooting things with silver bullets, he uses this gas, the silver mist or the silver gas that puts werewolves to sleep. And also, he has cameras around the place that shoot um, tranquilizer darts. So it's all, you know, kid friendly. I mean, he's not firing, shooting guns at people and stuff like that, which is good. Um, besides, he doesn't want to kill the werewolves. He just wants to, you know protect himself because he thinks they're scary and that they're evil. Um, as I mentioned in one of in, in one of the reviews, um, there was a really a lot of miscommunication and misunderstanding in the movie because the dogs hate the werewolves. The werewolves hate the dogs and the humans hate the werewolves. So um, there's that. Now, um, the, the movie culminates with um, Foxwell Crip actually infiltrating the... Um, I believe in the movie it's called a wolfing, where they transform into werewolves. In the book it was transwolfation. But um, he infiltrates this and starts shooting the werewolves with um, the, the sleepy dust. We'll call it sleepy dust. And um, Hotspur knocks him out while Freddy tries to explain to him that he's fine and that the werewolves are actually good. But, um, okay, in the book, um, Foxwell Crip is actually a pretty bad dude. Um, pretty evil, actually. Um, he, he's able to discern where the werewolves are by asking the butcher. Because he knows that werewolves eat a lot of meat. And, um, so, he goes to the butcher and asks if anyone has ordered a large supply of meat. 
And um, he's like, well, yeah, there, uh, Freddie Lupin had a birthday party, but it was a month late. And that was another thing is because werewolf birthdays are by the full moon. So it's a month later for, for the birthday, some way like that. That's 125 full moons for the transwolfation, the first one, the, the first wolf transformation. Anyways, let me check, make sure it's still recording. Yeah, okay, good. This is going to be a long video, and I'm sorry. And I'm I'm, not, I'm just touching the surface here because I'm not going to be able to nearly, you know, uh, go over everything. But yeah, in the book, he's able to discern and may basically, with the intention of killing all the werewolves. Which is, um, yeah, he doesn't have good intentions, but, um, but yeah. Okay. Another part that's different is um, in the book, Chariot and Harriet, the um, Hotspur's, um, well, it would be Freddy's cousins, they um, manage to capture Freddy and they take him to a poodle parlor. In the movie, they, um, they just go upstairs to the attic and they dye his um, tail and his hair his head hair, and they trim, they trim him, you know. Um, but in the book, they take him to an actual poodle parlor, and then he's eventually able to escape, and then he meets Batty. Um, but yeah, that's um, one thing that's different, because um, in the movie, he's able to escape from his room. He leaves, and he ends up in the back of a truck, and it takes him to Milford. Milford is the town. Um, at first, I didn't think they actually gave the name of the town, but if you look at the newspapers, it says Milford. So, yeah. I didn't notice that the first time through. But, um, so, yeah. And he ends up um, falling out of the truck and ending up in the middle of traffic, and Batty saves him there. In the book, um, Batty finds him looking at the globe, or at this globe of, um, in a travel agency. And, um, yeah, um, she, uh, she ends up sniffing his butt, and he doesn't like that. It's called the sniffing the the hello sniffing dance or something like that. I'm sorry if I if I forgot about what that, but what it was called. But um, then they go into well, didn't your mother teach you anything? That's the po the proper way to you know greet to greet another dog by sniffing their butt. Anyways, um, I'll talk about two different things, well, they happen at different times in the, um, well, in the book and the movie, it was something that happened two different times. I mean, well, a different time in the movie and a different time in the book. Um, in the book, um, it's funny. It's really funny. Um, in the book, um, Batty actually has to teach Freddy how to pee. Because he doesn't know how. And so, I guess he does. In the movie, he um, there's about like a 40 second scene of him peeing. Which is um, sort of like the, the, um, like the, um, the movie. I mean, the movie's kind of like the book. I think there's, those are like the similar scenes, I guess. Um... But yeah, let's see. Trying to remember. Anyways, um, the way that um, Batty and Freddy get caught and taken to cold facts initially is different as well. In the book, um, they steal sausages from the butcher. Well, Batty does. And um, Freddy... Um, helps to save Batty because um, she um, almost gets cleaved literally by the butcher who comes after her with a cleaver. So the book is kind of, well, you know, violent. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, um, and Foxwell Crypt knows, notices that his moonstone ring is glowing or something because he has a yeah, he has a moonstone ring, actually. And he's able to track the werewolves with that. 
but he realizes that it reacts to Freddy. And that gets him interested in Freddy, the pink poodle, in his pink poodle form. And that, um, okay. We went over Foxwell Crip in the movie, but we didn't go over Foxwell Crip in the book. We should probably take that all the way through. So I'm um, buckling. This is going to take a while. Okay. As you know, Foxwell Crip basically shot Fleischhart because Hotspur led or baited um, Fleischhart into the, into the clearing and Foxwell shot him. Anyways, also while um, Foxwell is getting um, the information about the Lupins, the werewolf clan, um, Batty is in, in there getting ready to steal sausages. Um, and Foxwell um, discerns everything from um, all of his research about where to go to find the werewolves, and he's insistent on that. However, he discovers Freddy and um, is able to track him down, which leads to Freddy and Batty getting caught and taken to cold facts. And um, Foxwell sees this, and um, after Freddy is um, basically turned down by his uncle, his uncle, they call his uncle, to come get him, but he leaves Freddy at the dog the dog place, Coldfax Fortress. And um, he ends up um, trying to adopt Freddy first, at first. But um, Freddy ends up biting Foxwell's finger and um, eating the ring so that he can't have it. Because it's really dangerous to have, for a werewolf hunter to have a way of hunting werewolves. Anyways, or detecting them. So, um, with that, um, in the book, he actually does adopt Batty instead. I guess for bait. Anyways. That, the fact that Freddy bit Foxwell, he gets thrown into the dungeon. Now, um, that's the book. The way he gets thrown into the dungeon in the movie is he pees everywhere. For the 40 seconds or whatever it was. And then all the dog, you know, dodging it, you know. But, um, either way, Freddy ends up in the dungeon and finds out that the ghost wolf, otherwise, or the dungeon ogre, according to the movie, it's dungeon ogre. According to the book, it is um, the ghost hound. Or his father. Because, well... Just because. But we're not done talking about Foxwell Crip yet. Foxwell Crip does infiltrate the um, the house. He sets up some, sna some snares. You know, the wire snares. And, um... The book really put emphasis on this item called the Book of Wolf and Names. And basically it is a book that has every single werewolf's name written. So, Foxwell is after that, and he gets it. Um, Foxwell has his silver gun. It shoots silver bullets. I mean, of course, a silver gun would shoot silver bullets. It makes complete and total sense. But, um, it ends up um, falling into the water, so he can't shoot it, and um, he ends up losing his pants. So he has to walk around in his boxers. Um... And, um, so he tries to, um, hide in the, in the library, the cat, the mansion library. So, eventually, um, the police take him away because they think he's crazy, and, um, that's that. There is a plot line that is completely absurd that is part of the movie. Again, this was something that really didn't gel with me. Um... There, the cold, the cold facts fortress is what's called in um, the book. So I'm going to call it that for the movie too, because it was called cold facts. Um, 
in the movie, there was a device that they made to basically turn the dogs into wigs, basically, which I thought was kind of eccentric or didn't really fit. And um, it's true, it, it isn't part of the book. Um, basically, the only thing that happens to the dogs in cold facts is that they stay there for all their lives, apparently. They don't, like, get euthanized or anything. But in the movie, they would have been sucked into this machine and then cut up into little pieces and turned into wigs, which is a little bit more horrible if you think about it. Anyways, let me check the time. 30 minutes. Okay. In the book, there was this um, dog named St. John. I believe it was St. John. One of the saints. I'm going to say St. John, or it was St. Charles. I might have to look that up. It was either St. John or St. Charles. He was a spy, and he would tell Cerberus about um, any escape plans, and then any, more, any offenders would be punished. Um, in the book, Cerberus was really, really evil. He hated all dogs. And he hated all humans, rather, also, except for um, his master. The commander was the name in the book. In the movie, Cerberus was more goofy, I thought. He didn't seem all that hateful at all or anything like that. He seemed just kind of goofy and stuff like that. Actually, in the book, Cerberus escaped down to the sewers and was never seen again. So um, nobody really knows what happened to him. Just like no nobody really knows what happened to Cerberus in the movie either, because he doesn't really show up after um, Twitch, or Twitchy, ended up um, really breaking the, the the wig machine and totally freaking Cerberus out. I will say that um, they added a character to the movie, which I'm totally cool with. It was a really good character, um, named Twitchy, which was a, ch a chihuahua. Had a nice little pl plot point with that. I really enjoyed that. Um, and so that was good. It's okay to add characters to movies, even if they aren't in the book. And I think that actually made the movie a lot better. Another thing that really made the movie better is that there was more backstory about Batty. Um, there was an entire tear-jerking scene about Batty's past. And in the book, you don't really hear about that. There really isn't much said about Batty's past. But there was an entire section of movie about Batty's past, how she was supposed to have a family, but nobody ever adopted her. So, um, there was that. Really a sad scene, too. Um, in the book, Miss Mutton, also in the movie, the book and the movie, Miss Mutton is a werein. In other words, she, um, she, I think she's part of the werewolf tribe, but she can't transform. But that's okay. Um, she has a bigger role in the movie because she holds off some some of the goons and helps the, the um, werewolves and dogs escape from um, cold facts. Um, Flashheart, Freddy, and stuff like that. Um, in the book, um, she basically just tries to keep after Hotspur to keep looking for Freddy. Which um, he does, you know, he pretends to because he knows where Freddy is and he knows that Freddy isn't getting out. Um, a diff another difference between the book and the movie is the time frame. In the movie, Freddy has one day in order to retrieve the ring and get back. But in the book, it's several days or even weeks before he's able to um, to actually get back home. So um, I think the movie, they expedited everything. Okay. Another thing about the book is they, they introduced Wolfsbane. And um, the, the movie didn't do that. Wolfsbane is a plant that werewolves can't stand. Basically, apparently it smells terrible. Um, and um, Foxwell Crip had set a trap. He didn't kill Batty. He just knocked her out with um, chloroform or some kind of, you know, knockout drops. And then put, put Wolfsbane around her so that the werewolves couldn't, um, you know, get through or um, get to her. But um, Freddy was like in human form by then and was able to just knock the plants away and they were able to save her. Um, also, in the book, Freddy recruited all the dogs from Cold Facts to, to help him. And that, that helped keep um, Foxel Crip from escaping. And the police were able to take him away. This was the book, of course. In the movie, um, it was Mrs. Mutt Miss Mutton that was um, 
that um, freed all the dogs, and then they all ran towards Farfang Castle, I believe. Sorry, let me just check. Okay, let's talk about um, one last thing, and this is going to be um, probably the last thing. And I know I'm not touching on everything. If people like, I could probably go and dig out another entire video of how the movie and the book are different, because they are really, really different. But, okay, let's talk about that. In the book, um, Batty can tell there's something different about Freddy by smell. And um, in the poodle parlor, or whatever it was, he was, um, you know, you think it's probably because they sprayed him with perfume and stuff, because they did in the book anyways. Um, so he probably, he, so she kept, in the book, he always kept saying that he smelled terrible. But, um, later, she comes to the realization that, um, it's because he smells human. At least some parts of him do. Apparently, underneath, he smells human, or something like that. And, um, it isn't really clarified in the movie how he smells different, but, um, just that he does. And she's... I think she almost says, well, you smell like a wolf or something like that. Or maybe a human, because he's basically all three. Anyways. Um, in the book, we're going to go back to the book here. I know I'm jumping around a lot. Um, Freddy um, has the moonstone in his, in his belly, you know, because he ate it when he was a dog. Um, and the only way he can turn back into a boy is because he can... So he goes down and he, he poops it out, apparently. But the moon's was just like left there, I guess. It's never said that, they, that he retrieves it. And um, he's able to help the dogs escape from inside because he's able to climb the bars as a human. Then he goes to the commander's office, takes her raincoat to cover up his nakedness because, you know, when the werewolf changes back, he's completely naked. Um, and he doesn't realize that at first. And all the dogs are barking at him and stuff like that. Um, he, he was a dog for so long that he basically forgot to, you know, about clothes. So, um, now, in the movie, he does turn back when he, when he, when he, when, when his dad gets the, um, silver collar off of him. And whenever he's exposed to moonlight. Anyways, um, then, um, he first of all covers himself with a newspaper, and then he finds a superhero outfit that someone has hung up on a line. In the movie, that is. Um, in the book, it's a raincoat. But, yeah. Anyways. Um, there were a lot of different differences between the book and the movie, and um, not all of them were bad. Not all of them were good, by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, there, there was added, in a way, they added too much to the movie. And that isn't exactly a bad thing by any stretch of the imagination. Um, some of the stuff was really over the top, like the machine that would turn the dogs into wigs. Um, the opening scene where the um, the werewolves are, you know, saving people and stuff like that. Um, the stuff that wasn't in the book seemed a little bit far-fetched. Except for, you know, the backstory with, um, Batty and stuff like that. I really like that. They added more backstory for Batty. But, um, but yeah. The, um, but yeah, okay. I think that's about all that I have time for. Holy crap. Okay. Anyway, uh, the point I wanted to get across was that this is a really good movie. But, um, you should also read the book. Um, I do plan on getting, eventually buying a copy of the book to donate to our local library so that we have a copy. Um, that way we don't have to borrow it from Peoria again. Not, nothing wrong with the copy from Peoria. I'm, I'm thankful that we have the Alliance library system because I can, I'm able to borrow books that way. Books that our library doesn't have or, or books that are currently out. Um, but yeah, so I will try to work on that. Um... I've really enjoyed the movie. I think it has a unique take on werewolves. So, of course, I like it. And um, this was just basically the... Um, 
tip of the iceberg, basically. Like I say, I could probably make an entire another video of how the how they're different. The uh, the things are different. Um, Harriet and Chariot barely made an in, made any appearance in the movie at all. Um, where whereas in the book they were pretty common because of how they tormented Freddy. But yeah, that was just a few of the ways that the book and the movie were different. And like I say, I, I really enjoy the movie. It had a good message to it. Um, the message of being yourself, um, accepting who you are, accepting people for who they are. Um, had really good music. I really enjoyed it. Um, even the more, even the parts that really didn't really make much sense to me. And then later I realized why was because they were, they weren't in the book. But yeah, the book is a pretty quick read. Um, but yeah, I have read the entire book. Very, very good book. And I suggest you read it as well. And I also would watch the movie. The movie is a good watch even without the book, but everything makes more sense with the book. There will be some questions I'm going to ask the author when I get the chance. But anyways, if you like this content, then make sure you like and subscribe and ring the bell so you know when I upload. Also, if you want to support me anyway, all the information will be in the description below. Also, we have a Discord server that you can join if you want to. Anyways, thanks for watching, everyone, and have a great day.